Hello, Quartermaster Board. What is Sea Scouting? A present 15 minute presentation. Today I'm going to talk about the Founder's Vision, Ship Organizational Structure, and the Sea Scout Ranks. Okay, so Lord Baden Powell had a brother, and in 1912 he started Sea Scouts. Recently we had the Sea Scout Centennial in 2012. Crazily enough, the Eagle Scout Centennial was the same exact year. There are a bunch of roles in Sea Scouts as well as Boy Scouts. We have the Bosun, uh, Bosun's Mate, Crew Leader, Assistant Crew, Assistant Crew Leader, Yeoman, Purser, Specialist, Storekeeper, and Bugler. Um, the ones in Boy Scouts similar to that would be Senior Patrol Leader, ASPL, you would have patrol leaders, assistant patrol leaders, you would have scribes, treasurers, instructors and troop guides, quartermasters, and buglers, the same exact thing. So for the organization roles, here's more. As I said, also uh, what we have instead of a single assistant uh, senior patrol leader, we have two called the Bose two bosun's mate one is in charge of administration paperwork and stuff like that and the bosun's mate in charge of program is in charge of all the campouts and what goes along with that um along with that we have the people in charge of each camp out at the youth level which would be the activity chairs and the other things necessary to make sure that the campouts perform smoothly there are four Sea Scout ranks instead of Tenderfoot, Second Class, First Class, Star Life, and Eagle, which is six. So, um, well, I guess it would be seven if you count Boy Scout rank. But anyway, um, we have Apprentice Seaman, Ordinary Seaman, Able Seaman, and Quartermaster. Though there are less ranks, it is much more difficult from experience of being uh, going from... All the way from Tiger Scout all the way to Eagle Scout, I can tell you that getting Quartermaster is a lot more difficult. For Apprentice, there are a few things uh, similar to Tenderfoot and Boy Scout. You would have the Promise, uh, basic stuff on how to how the uniform works and how the structure of the Sea Scouts works. There are similar knots, swim test, you need to have a swim test uh, to even get the first rank, so I guess that would be a limiting factor. Sea Scout Promise Ideals, guard against water accidents, know where life-saving devices are and how to use them, render aid, render aid to those in need and protect people under their care. Uh, you would need to know these things to help other people that end up crashing and know what to do when the the unexplicable happens um, and what stuff to use when emergencies are happening and after all the crazy stuff with emergencies are over how to do first aid and stuff like that and how to be calm under emergency situations and how to help other people get uh, get where they need to be kind of thing. Uh, so in the uniform, it's a bit different from this uh, Boy Scout uniform. It is a lot more durable. It is darker. It has long sleeves that you can roll up to where you can wear it in cold weather and summer weather. And it's comfortable all the time. It's also great because it's pretty good wind resistant material so that we can use it out on the water and it's great for keeping the sun away out on the sailboats. Now in Sea Scouts you have to do for a uh, for apprentice and ordinary you have to do 16 service hours each. A couple of things we've done on West Point Lake is we've done some trash pickup and cleanup at Camp Thunder, we have done some service days helping out with uh, cleaning up after camp and stuff like that. 
uh, down below is on the bottom left would be TC's Eagle Project with fish attractors. You go out to specific places and dump them in the lake and over time algal growth and the mud moves up around them and it's ideal habitat for fish. And that is us on the right trying to mix concrete and get them in the buckets and get them ready to go. Um, there are eight knots you need for Apprentice. The yellow ones are the ones you probably already recognize. The other three would be the cleat hitch overhand knot and figure eight knot. Overhand knot is a basic knot, but it's, we actually need to know it because it's a stopper knot used for different things to keep the rope from going through blocks. Also figure eight. Um, cleat hitch, that is a knot that every scout should know considering we spend uh, so much time on flag ceremonies just wrapping around the post when it's such a simple knot that you don't even need to do all that unnecessary things. Uh, emergency reporting, you would have radios and flares and semaphore. You would have signal flags and emergency flags and air horns and stuff like that. Customs and courtesies, you would have land ship customs and courtesies, kind of like uh, Bridge of Honor, um, essentially of Court of Honor. The uh, picture on the right was from my Eagle uh, Court of Honor, and bottom left as well. It's a bit different from, C uh, from Boy Scouts, as in it's a little bit more formal. And um, up on the top left is a uh, bridge of honor for bringing the scout, new scouts in the uh, ship to, uh, what do you call it, uh, bring the scouts up to Apprentice. And it's actually part of the requirements in, a, in Apprentice to go through one of these ceremonies. So, also in Apprentice you need to know about PFDs, type 1 through type 5. Um, type 4 is the only one where you're not allowed to wear it. It's more like additional fro flotation. That would be the ring buoys, the three blue, yellow, and the white and red one. Okay, so for ordinary, you have to tie more knots, more service hours. You have to do some cruise time. You have to do a boating safety course, which is essentially the rules of the road on the lake and how not to crash. You have to do the Swimming Merit Badge. If you do it in Boy Scouts, it carries on over into Sea Scouts. And you have to know for vessel safety checks what kind of gear you need for your boats in case of emergency. Also, we need to know about radios, emergency drills. Um, well, I guess I can talk about that when it comes up. It's over here. There is also some electives that you can have. There's four uh this is just three of them. Uh, for ordinary, there's also drill, uh, drill, close order drill, and you could you you could do uh, dinghy handling. So the extra knots this time, there's a lot more extra. You should recognize the timber hitch and the top line hitch, but now you would have French bowling, bowling on a bite, rolling hitch, marlin hitch, and stevedore's knot. Stevedore's knot is a beefed up figure eight knot to where it's less likely to go through a through the block using different things. A uh, marlin hitch would be used for making hammocks or holding things down. Rolling hitch is a clove hitch that will not move up and down a line. Uh, if you've if you've tied a taut line hitch, you're essentially tying a rolling hitch on itself. And with a bowline on a bite, it's the ability to put a bowline in the middle of a rope without having to have either end to use. And a French bowline is another knot you can use as a harness. In NC Scouts, uh, one of the requirements for Ordinary is to do a 36-hour cruise. Now, we've done a few in our time uh, in Ship 378. The first one we went out on a, we went canoeing for uh, three days at Lake Alatoona um, using backpacking food and uh, using GPS going random places over the lake. 
Uh, the second time we took out our sailboats for the first time and, and we figured out how they worked so in that we have um, we did some sailing we had a bit of craziness going on we ended up in Hurricane Sandy well the remains of Hurricane Sandy uh, this was on West Point Lake so we just had a lot of extra wind and uh, rough weather, dark clouds, stuff like that. But we had a lot of fun. And the uh, third time we did some night sailing and camping um, across the lake in a basic pioneer campsite. No source of water and stuff like that. Um, and basically roughed it. And okay, so for the boating safety course, that was us figuring out how the rules of the road worked and why you would actually need to follow them. Uh, these are some of the rules. Um, you have a red light on the port side and a green light on the starboard side. If you see a red light, you have to get out of the way. If you see a green light, you're the stand on vessel and you don't have to move. Uh, that doesn't always work because not everyone knows the rules so the main rule that you always have to follow is to keep your boat from uh, is to guard against water accidents is to keep your boat from being smashed that is the one rule you shall follow it is the overall rule that trumps all others uh, like I said the swimming merit badge it carries over Safe swim defense and safety afloat. Vessel safety checks. The essentials for that is essentially the fire extinguishers, different PFDs you need, navigation lights so you can go night sailing, registration so you know whose boat it is, distress signals, flares, lights, stuff like that, sound devices, and that's about it. Radio communications. How to use a radio so you're not uh, so you understand the lingo on the lake. Pon Pon, Securite, Mayday, things like that. There are a good number of channels, and each channel is specific to what you want to use it for. For emergency drills, a couple of them that we have would be man overboard, fire drills, and abandoned ship. Some of them lead to other drills, say if the ship is on fire, eventually you may have to abandon ship. Um, on the left is us pulling Patrick in from the lake with a thing called a life sling. On the right we have the, our abandoned ship gear. In that water cooler we have our first aid kit, maps, um, radios, stuff like that. And we attach dry bags. Each person on our ship has a dry bag with all our survival gear like extra clothes, tiny essentials, water bottles, first aid kits, emergency stuff, essentially. Also, we need to know about rope char characteristics and handling. That would be splices, rope types, fusing, whipping rope. The one on the top, uh, top right would be palm and needle whipping. It's essentially uh, whipping um, 10 times better because it's less likely to come apart. For rowboat handling, uh, rowing merit badge, it's not a requirement to have for Sea Scouts, but you do have to row in a straight line for a quarter mile and then back again, do a couple other fancy maneuvers essentially similar to the stuff you have for the rowing merit badge so we go ahead and get it anyway uh, this is us messing around on West Point Lake for a boat anatomy uh, different types of the boats on the um, you have to know the different types of boats for ordinary we play with Legos to help demonstrate that as well um, as you can see up on the top left there is a whole bunch of different uh, boat boat parts that you need to know. There's actually more than what's on that list, but I'm not going to go into detail. Then you have anchoring ground tackle. 
Um, basically, it's to tell how to anchor to where you don't throw the anchor in without any line attached to it. So you're not trying to attach your boat to the bottom of the lake by the force. And actually, there's different lengths of line you need to have versus whether you're just dropping hook for lunch or whether you're trying to drop hook for um, going through a hurricane or something like that. So basic navigation elements, Dad's crazy acronym of 60D Street, that's basically speed time distance or D equals RT, distance equals rate times time kind of thing. Uh, the 60 is to convert minutes to hours and vice versa. Then you've got TVMDC and adding west, subtracting east kind of thing for converting from true compass course to magnetic to the boat compass. And essentially, it is chart navigation, which is different from land land navigation because instead of land details, it's water details and water depths and stuff like that. Uh, for basic sailing, small boat sailing merit badge is a great way to help teach how to sail. Um, up on the top right, that's some of these sunfish they have up at Lake Alatuna. And this was a small merit, small boat sailing merit badge that we did with uh, the troop just recently in July. Engine, engine use and maintenance. You need to know how to use the engines, how to keep them up to date, and how to fix them if they break. Sailboat races, essentially how to better sail, how to go faster, how to control the boat in all weather conditions instead of just going with the wind you're actually trying to go to a specific point and this was Commodore's cut different type uh, different times and different lured windward marks that we use and stuff like that for able there's a whole bunch of different requirements as well it is a little bit more advanced going through getting ready for seal and things like that you'll essentially knock out able quite easily and here's some more of the requirements so for block and tackle there's different things as to a 12 year old could pick up my dad with the block and tackle with like a five to one that would be essentially five 12 year olds pulling up my dad instead of just one uh, that's physics for you. Uh, docking and mooring. How not to crash the boat into the docks or other boats. You know what boat stands for. Break out another thousand. Well, let's let's keep the thousands down to a minimum, eh? Okay, Lysinger Merit Badge. That also carries over. Not very good pictures, but whatever. What can you do? Wilderness first aid, this is more a ranger requirement that we added to the program that we can do better with first aid because there's no real first aid requirements for the uh, for the rankings. It's part of life saving merit badge and swimming merit badge and BSA lifeguard. So essentially when you're getting that you're getting your first aid requirements. But we took it one step further and got wilderness first aid. Cruising. Uh, this is different stuff we've done. Uh, the first one up on the top left, that wasn't with the ship. That was us going down the Flint River uh, with, uh, with Troop 293. And we did some kayaking also on this time on the Chattahoochee River. Bottom left was a cruise we did with Ship 100 back when it was just a ship of me and my dad. And then on the bottom right is us doing long cruise out on Mobile Bay. Flag handling with the abominable bosun's pipe. Oh man. Uh, how to hold the flag properly rather than trying to hold the flag as if you're going to a funeral. And how to do proper flag ceremonies that are good and well actually make sense. Some of these are aids to navigation and how 
what these things are used for is telling whether you're getting too close to shore or um, navigation to where you're trying to get somewhere kind of thing. And hang on a second. Okay, so we're back. The uh, Up on the top right, that would be a safe water marker. The end buoy for a channel going out to sea. That would be in Newport Beach with the seals all over top of it. You could have a lighthouse tower. You could have different things, day markers and range markers and other things like that. This would be a range marker right here. Uh, this would be day markers and buoys, cans and nuns, stuff like that. Rules of the road, big boats, kind of thing where if a boat is not under command, no one is in charge of it, or the steering rigging has gone out and they can't move, they've got the right of way over a big huge barge. Whereas if it was a sailboat versus a motorboat sailboat has less maneuverability so they have the right of way over the motorboat fire control and prevention that's a lot of fun to learn about because you actually get to use the fire extinguishers for once wish they taught that at school water navigation similar to orienteering like i said the topographical max topographical maps are more inverted to where it says water depths rather than land heights Muscle boat proficiency would be kayaking, canoeing, rowboating, stuff like that. That would be us doing the kayaking merit badge. And Aaron swamping his kayak and proving that you can move a kayak when it's underwater. He's going submarine. Uh-oh. And for quartermaster, the last one. Now, a couple of things about quartermaster is you can actually do a... Do different requirements as well. You have options as to where you can go to SEAL, which you can go to one of five places in the U.S. for a leadership training course. Or you can lead a 40-hour cruise, uh, do all the planning and other stuff like that, and take your ship out and actually implement it. Didn't do the 40-hour cruise. I did SEAL. We did 25 miles out to sea around Catalina Island. Did around 60 miles the whole entire time on a 40-foot uh, catch which is a two mast three sail boat uh, also there's BSA lifeguard you get to fix up a boat get ready to go for take it out of winter storage or take it out of storage from years ago kind of thing uh, these are some pictures from seal with sleeping on the boat going to the top of the mast to fix things tying knots Fixing emergencies like the uh, bottom middle picture where we had to take down the jib because of har harsh weather. Uh, navigation tests and just going crazy out on the big huge monster boat. And then we have to do a leadership project just like Eagle Scout. As you can see right here, this, uh, this fish is... Uh, this would be from Aaron's Fish Attractors. The Ospreys like to eat fish like that. I guess he's screaming. Uh, but anyway, in here we've got building osprey nests where the birds roost up in these nests. Uh, I built them out of the way so that the they're out of the elements, and the bird the birds can see better into the water. Ospreys like to use um, dead or dying trees rather than green leafy trees because they can see better. And the problem is, is when people see a dead or dying tree, let's push it over. It's a hazard to humans. Oh no. So we have to create some sturdy uh, structures that the birds can actually use so that we can keep them around. BSA lifeguard, some of these pictures. Um, thank you to Camp Thunder. We're probably going to come back next summer for staff week to do some more. Um, more of our ship to get BSA lifeguard. But refurbishing, this was the Venture 22 as we took it out of storage at Camp Thunder. This is what it looked like the first time we pulled out from underneath the shelter. And as with the Ship 378 motto, if it ain't fun, we ain't doing it. Whatever about the grammar, but 
still our motto and unless we have to that's all the navigation and all the paperwork stuff that's where we can go out and do have go and have some fun so anyway thank you for considering me for quartermaster and i guess i will continue with my quartermaster board see you guys later